Hello, have you wondered why hypoglycemia happens? You can find that out in this video too, because today we will discuss now uh, the hypoglycemia that we see in adult patients with diabetes. So we will cover how it occurs, the causes of it, the symptoms of it, the diagnosis, also the risk factors and how we can prevent this disease and also the treatment of hypoglycemia in adults. So please, not in children here. So let's start with a definition here. Hypoglycemia is the state of having a blood glucose level that is too low to effectively fuel the body cells, which is specifically less than 60 milligram per deciliter or 3.3 millimole per liter in another unit. So we will see that glucose now, which comes from carbohydrates found in foods, is the primary fuel source for the brain and also for the body. So while the body is now quite good at extracting glucose from the foods we eat, it relies on a hormone called insulin to get the glucose inside the cells of specific organs, like for example, the liver, the fat muscle, uh, the fat cells and the muscle cells, for example. So we can now think of insulin as a key here. So without insulin, the glucose just remains in the blood. So the usual uh, blood glucose range is about 60 to 140 milligram per deciliter or 3.3 to 7.8 millimole per liter. And it, this de range depends on uh, the meal, the medicine taking, the hormone level of the body and the regulating mechanism of glucose levels, growth hormones, cortisol, many things. However, the most critical hormone for glucose regulation is insulin. So when there's not enough insulin produced, is, for example, in diabetes here, the blood glucose levels are high. So above above 140 milligram per deciliter or more than 7.8 millimole per liter, known as then hyperglycemia. And conversely, when it's too low uh, or too much insulin, then we have a too low amount of glucose levels, as we said, below 60 milligram per deciliter. So now, why is hypoglycemia a concern? A, a significant fact is that the brain depends on blood glucose as its primary source of fuel. So when there is too little glucose, it can impair the brain's ability to function. And severe and prolonged hypoglycemia may then result in seizures. It can result in severe brain injury or even death. So we will talk more about this in the symptoms part. However, in most cases now, hypoglycemia is very temporary. So it's easily treated. It usually does not have any serious consequences for the most part. And there are several rare disorders in which hypoglycemia is recurrent and potentially potentially actually life-threatening. However, now, with timely diagnosis and the appropriate treatment, these can be effectively managed, these patients. So what, are, what the causes are now, let's see. We have people without diabetes, uh, um, hyperglycemia can result from body producing, for example, too much insulin after a meal or uh, causing blood sugar levels to drop. And this effect is called reactive hypoglycemia and can be an early sign of diabetes. Other causes, including certain medicines or diseases or hormones, as we said, or enzyme deficiencies and tumors, all these can also be causes. However, when people have diabetes, too much insulin or other diabetic medications may cause your uh, blood sugar level to drop too low, causing then hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia can or also occur if you eat less than usual after, for example, taking diabetes medications or exercising more than you usually do regularly. The symptoms now of hypoglycemia may differ from person to person. However, the most common signs, most common early signs include sudden moodiness or behavior changes, clumsiness, jerky movements, headache, irritability, dizziness, shakiness, tingling, tingling lips, hunger, pale skin color, sweating. So you see a lot of diffuse symptoms. And suppose that you have uh, now a low uh, sugar level that is not treated, then uh, there can be more severe symptoms like from confusion, blurred vision, unusual behavior, slurred speech, clumsiness, weakness, seizures, uh, feeling sleepy, collapsing, passing out. So a lot of symptoms. So a low blood sugar level can also happen while you are sleeping and may then you cause that you wake up during the night or cause headaches, cause tiredness, damp sheets from sweat in, in the morning and so on. And symptoms such as tremors, palpitations, sweating are all neurogenic. Neurogenic means originating or controlled by the nervous system. In contrast, neuroglucopenic symptoms include dizziness, weakness, delirium, 
confusion. So neuroglucopenia is a shortage of glucose in the brain, usually due to hypoglycemia. So now, how can you test for hypoglycemia? Well, if you have signs or symptoms of low blood sugar, check your blood sugar levels with a blood glucose meter. So simple. It is a small device that measures and displays your blood sugar level. And you have uh, hypoglycemia, as we said, when your blood glucose levels drop below 60 mg per deciliter or below 3.3 mmol per liter. And therefore, the alert value is a blood glucose of 60 mg per deciliter and 3.3 mmol per liter. I try to repeat it as many times as possible. So this value is essential because it should signal now that the patient can develop clinically significant hypoglycemia and then prompt appropriate actions such as eating carbohydrates are needed. So we need to really act on this. So if you are admitted to the hospital now, then in addition to a complete medical history, a physical examination by the doctor, uh, specific blood tests uh, should be performed to diagnose hypoglycemia. And for those who have symptoms of hypoglycemia and do not have diabetes, the underlying disorder is diagnosed by measuring blood glucose. Okay. And uh, we can also measure other metabolic fuels such as lactate. We can measure ketone bodies, hormone levels, and so on. And some patients with hypoglycemia must be admitted to the hospital to undergo a supervised fasting study. And this fasting study is to reproduce the low blood sugar episode and safely collect the needed blood tests, such as self-monitoring of the blood glucose measurements or a continuous glucose monitoring. And in the hospital now, they will also check liver function tests. They will check serum insulin, uh, cortisol, thyroid levels, and additionally, there will also be blood tests for infection. So, there is a classification based on the diagnosis. And we can classify hypoglycemia into some main parts here. We have uh, severe, asymptomatic, documented symptomatic, probable symptomatic, and pseudo-hypoglycemia. So, severe hypoglycemia is hypoglycemia that requires the assistance of another person to administer carbohydrates or, or administer glucagon or other resusc resuscitative action. So actively. Another type known as uh, the documented symptomatic hypoglycemia has the typical symptoms of hypoglycemia accompanied by a measured glucose level of 60 mg per deciliter, so less than that or less than 3.3 mmol per liter. Conversely, asymptomatic hypoglycemia is hypoglycemia that is not accompanied by the symptoms. We don't have any symptoms here. But we have a measured glucose level of less than 60 mg per deciliter or less than 3.3 mmol per liter. <clears throat> the other classification was the probable symptomatic hypoglycemia, which is presumed hypoglycemia during which typical symptoms are there. So we have hypoglycemic symptoms, but it is not accompanied by the measurement. So we didn't measure it. The last is pseudo-hypoglycemia, which is when a person experiences specific symptoms of hypoglycemia, but with a measured plasma glucose concentration above 60 mg per deciliter or above 3.3 mmol per liter. So these are the five main groups. So the risk factors now for hypoglycemia include a history of recent severe hypoglycemia, a long duration of diabetes, chronic kidney disease, malnutrition, older age, exercise, alcohol intake, we have intensive glucose, uh, glycemic therapy. And in addition, we have random timing of meals, including missed meals and low carbohydrate content of meals. And this can also be a risk factor. So the prevention now of hypoglycemia involves assessing for the risk factors and then tailoring the treatment to reduce the risk. So this treatment involves flexible and rat rational insulin and other medications. So a flexible insulin regimen is one that allows you to adjust the timing and amount of insulin to meet your needs in contrast with a conventional regimen where you take the insulin at set times and have to follow this strict, strict schedule. So a general approach now uh, to reducing hypoglycemic risk now is involving patient education, making frequent self-monitoring of blood glucose, usually with a finger stick measurement or with a continuous glucose monitoring device. Okay, Ongoing professional guidance and support and all, all these things are very uh, important to meet the glycemic goals and to benefit the patient. How? 
patients should be taught to adjust their medications, their meal plans, and exercise based on the glucose patterns during the day. In addition, close relatives or friends, such as a spouse or a partner, should be taught to recognize, recognize severe hypoglycemia and treat it immediately with glucagon. Patients should be told to be especially vigilant following an episode of hypoglycemia and be wary of over-treating uh, de uh, over developing hypoglycemia with oral uh, carbohydrates or glucagon. Okay, so for, for a person now treated with insulin uh, or with a sulfonylurea or with a meglitinid, then defensive actions are, need, are needed. So we need to self-monitoring, uh, checking the glucose routinely, so repeating the measurement in the near term, avoiding any critical tasks such as driving, uh, and then we need to ingest carbohydrates and we need to adjust the treatment regimen. So patients with symptomatic hypoglycemia should eat carbohydrates. 15 to 20 grams of oral glucose is typically sufficient. And glucose may be then consumed as tablet form or juice form or a milk form or with snacks or with a meal and so on. And patients should retest this glucose after 15 minutes and then uh, retreat if the glucose uh, is not improved. So patients with impaired consciousness, typically brought to the hospital now, should get intravenous dextrose with 25 gram of 50% glucose to treat the hypoglycemia. Meanwhile, to treat hypoglycemia in a person with impaired consciousness and no established intravenous access, there should be immediate glucagon administration. Okay, this is the difference here. The usual dose of glucagon administration is 0.5 to 1 milligram given as a subcutaneous or an intramuscular injection, or we have 3 milligram given intranasally. Further treatment then depends on how the severe, uh, how the severe the symptoms are. So. If we recap, we can say that hypoglycemia uh, have many causes, have many symptoms. We need to look at the diagnosis, remember the risk factors, remember how we can prevent it and how we treat it. So hypoglycemia is a state now of having a blood glucose level that is too low to effectively fuel the body cells. Symptoms of hypoglycemia are hunger, shakiness, dizziness, confusion, difficulty speaking, feeling anxious, feeling weak, and more severe ones are um, difficulty paying attention, confusion, blurred vision, and so on. And you check your blood sugar levels with a, uh, a blood glucose meter, a small device. You have then hypoglycemia when your level are below 60 milligram per deciliter or below 3.3 millimol per liter. And this alert value then signals the risk for developing all the symptoms mentioned before. And then it, uh, you must be treated promptly with appropriate actions such as eating carbohydrates. And the risk factors now for hypoglycemia include history of recent severe hypoglycemia or a long duration of diabetes or chronic kidney disease. Malnutrition is a risk factor. Older age, exercise, alcohol intake, and intensive glycemic therapy. So too much therapy. The prevention now of hypoglycemia involves assessing for the risk factors and tailoring the treatment to reduce the risk factors. So for, so for a person treated with insulin or sulfonylurea, sulfonylurea or meglitinid, meglitinid, it is important that you don't drive, don't, you take the defensive actions because you know that you can get the hypoglycemia and you can collapse, for example. You should then take carbohydrates if you feel that and then after 15 minutes then check it again and then take more carbohydrates if needed. In the hospital you should get intravenous dextrose with 25 gram of 50% glucose. Meanwhile if there's no intravenous access then you give 0.5 to 1 milligram glucagon subcutaneously or intramuscular in an injection or you can take 3 milligram intranasally. So I think that is enough. Thank you very much for listening. Take care and hopefully you will now be able to manage hypoglycemia and to actually make a uh, long story short, if you get the hypoglycemia, you get all the symptoms as we said, uh, and you measure blood glucose that is lower than these values, which was, I have repeated it 10 times. So below 60 milligram per deciliter or below 3.3 millimol per liter. Okay, please remember these values. If they are lower than you have a lot of symptoms, please take some sugar. Please take some milk.
drink something that contains sugar and that and then repeat repeat the measurement again 15 minutes later if it's severe of course meanwhile you should already tell a friend you should tell the doctor you should call the ambulance uh, because the first episode can uh, be problematic because you don't have an experience so in the first uh, episode of this hypoglycemia please then call the ambulance okay and if you have hypoglycemia often then as we said friends relative spouse needs to be educated they need to have a glucagon with them or they need to have some sugar with them uh, because if you're walking on the streets and then you really need it quickly and as we said if you have an intravenous line then you get it in the intravenous line uh, otherwise uh, so you get dextrose or glucose otherwise you will get glucagon uh, intramuscularly if um, if there is no intravenous line available and therefore what i'm saying reference relatives has to be taught how to inject this 0.5 to 1 milligram glucagon and then the patient will suddenly appear normal again so uh, hypoglycemia is uh, seemingly very drastic when you see it for the first time the patient collapses, is dizzy and collapses and is unconscious. And, uh, and then you give this glucagon or you give some sugar and then suddenly he wakes up and is completely normal. So uh, you have a very good, um, as a doctor, you have a very good satisfaction rate of treatment here because you, you treat the patient very quickly and the patient um, can actually go home in a couple of minutes. So you will wait, of course, half an hour at least because as we said we need to check it 15 minutes later and then give some sugar if needed then we check it another 15 minutes later and so on and depending depending on how severe the hypoglycemia was the patient can go home after half an hour if it was more severe then he has to maybe stay in the hospital rather to monitor the patient for a couple of hours and adjust the treatment of his medications so his uh, oral medications or if it's uh, more severe the insulin treatment and most of the cases I would say the problem lies in patients who are taking insulin because they have a very severe diabetes and therefore they sometimes overshoot themselves with insulin because they don't eat so much carbohydrates that day or for lunch they eat uh, less lunch or they skip the lunch and they, they inject this strict rule as we said uh, where you have to inject insulin strictly in the morning uh, in the evening and so on and therefore your insulin will go into your body but you don't have any carbohydrates in your blood and therefore all this glucose will be taken from the blood that is left in the blood and then you of course get hypoglycemia a too low level of how much less than 60 milligram per deciliter or less than 3.3 millimole per liter thank you very much for listening take care bye bye